Today's mass intentions are for Richard Mullenbach, Paul Kendra, and Adele Camo. We especially uh, welcome those who are participating online, and uh, you may hear some voices at today's Mass. This is because this Mass is uh, staff Mass, so our staff will be present, and I um, hope all of you have a hymnal. Our opening song is song number 535, Oh God, Beyond All Praising, number 535. And uh, for those of you at home, feel free to, to join in in song. of Richard Mullenbach, Paul Kendra, and Adele Como. Uh, the orations I'll use are for our relatives and our friends. Can I do the sign of the cross yet? Yes. Thank you. As we enter into these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sin. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, Lord mercy. have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Lord, mercy. Have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the grace of the Holy Spirit have filled the hearts of your faithful with gifts of charity, grant health of mind and body to your servants for whom we beseech your mercy, that they may love you with all their strength and with all their love, 
do what is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church. He himself, the Savior of the body, as the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church, and handed himself over to her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word that he might present to himself the church in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church because we are members of his body. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reverence to Christ and the church. In any case, each one of you should love his wife as himself, and the wife should respect her husband. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reveal to the little ones the mysteries of your kingdom. Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like? To what can I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that a man took and planted in the garden. When it was fully grown, it became a large bush, and the birds of the sky dwelt in the branches. Again, he said, to what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch of dough was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. bittersweet celebration. It's always sweet to celebrate the sacred mysteries that help us remember how good our God is to us. But it's bitter as we face changes that we would prefer not to experience. I'm now officially in the third age of life, which I think of above all as the age of loss. It's not all pitiful. Hopefully we've gained experience and wisdom in the years that are behind us, but I'm conscious every time I get up after sitting for a little while that things have changed for the worse. I've lost some of my vigor. I've lost most of my hair. Although I've been compensated with hair emerging from my ears, which I did not have before, and eyebrows that once were like grass, but now are like hedges. It's still a time of loss, and so it is with our parish. I think often of my good friend Albert Jowdy, with the privilege of pastoring this parish in his 30s, when many of you were not so very much older. I'm in my 60s, and you're older too. It is surely not the same. We've enjoyed here the service of an extraordinary group of women who have led an exemplary program of faith formation for decades. Some of our programs have been models for the Archdiocese. Now, although we know philosophically that all good things come to an end, we would wish for a better way to reach that end than having it forced upon us by a pandemic seems almost tawdry to have to say goodbye to a fine team of people because of economics determined by a creature we can't even see. I prefer today to speak of mustard seeds and yeast. Biblical literists, literalists struggled with Jesus' image of the mustard seed as we're accustomed to thinking of mustard as a salad green how can birds nest in something like that? It has no branches. Of course, the mustard to which Jesus refers is an annual weed in his part of the world, not a cultivar. It grows into a bush, sometimes seven feet tall, and so birds could nest in it. It would seem at first glance to be compared to a mustard bush and worse, to only the seed, but this little seed becomes something that contributes to life on many levels. 
even weeds can't proclaim the good news and give glory to God. Yeast is a microbe, it's a fungus. My childhood family doctor, when dealing with fungi on our bodies, which is common and hot in humid Florida, would always declare the fungus is among us. The nasty black junk that gets in the grout joints in your bathroom is a fungus too. Jesus chooses to honor the lowly, often despised fungus in his simile to demonstrate the quiet, subversive nature of God's grace that elevates those whom it has invaded. The presence of God's kingdom penetrates and uplifts us in a subtle but a persistent way. So let me say to all of you, I'm grateful that we are like weeds and fungi. We're at our very best when, like weeds and fungi, we grow and spread unstoppably. The low percentage relative of our enrollment of children in our programs tells us that, tragically, our work uh, is seen more like a weed than a beautiful flower. But, as the saying in Spanish, la mala hierba nunca muere, says it, weeds never die. Nor does the word of God and God's kingdom. They persist like weeds and fungus. They invade even the most arid earth and slip in between our toes despite our efforts and they make us itch. The members of our staff that will all too soon leave us have been invading the arid souls of St. Thomas, adults and children for decades. The faith they have sown there will not be eradicated. Even Roundup can't kill it. All the seeds may lay dormant for a while, but I'm told that seeds found in King Tut's tomb germinated when given the right circumstance. The itch promulgated will have to be scratched, and that scratching will lead to pondering the source that an encounter with the living God will ensue. Today is the day to say thank you to the Almighty for creating the mustard and yeast and thanks to you for being sowers and kneaders. May the Eucharist we celebrate draw us closer to each other and closer to Christ and through Christ, closer to the Father. Men and women of faith, let us turn to our loving Father, confident that we'll hear and answer the prayers which we offer in Christ's name. For church leaders, may God grant ample wisdom, patience, and love for all who lead the people of God. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil authorities, may God grant them compassion and wisdom in their decision making. We pray. For, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, may Christ's healing hand rest upon them and bring them relief. We pray. For, hear our prayer. For all members of this community, may the love of Jesus flow through us to one another in small and large ways, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Richard Mulebeck, Paul Kendra, and Adele Kamu, Kumo, and for all our beloved dead, and for those who have no one to mourn their death, may they soon be welcomed into the fullness of the kingdom we pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, our Father, please hear and answer these our prayers, both spoken and unspoken. 
which we offer from our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song during the preparation of the gifts is number 386, The Servant Song, number 386. Acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Have mercy, O Lord, on your servants, for whom we offer your majesty this sacrifice of praise, that through these holy gifts we may obtain the grace of heavenly blessing and the glory of eternal happiness. Through Christ our Lord. our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father creator of the world and source of all life for you never forsake the works of your wisdom but by your providence are even now at work in our midst with mighty hand and outstretched arm you led your people israel through the desert now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world you always accompany her by the power of the holy spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so with angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, 
that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lead 
us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, that's the most Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our song during communion, Blessed Are They, number 629, number 629.
Let us pray. We ask you, Lord, as we receive the divine mysteries, grant your servants to whom you have given a love for us, pardon for sins, consolation in this life, and unfailing guidance, that all of us, united in your service, may rejoice together before your face. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Will Pat Grissom, Rebecca Hartman, and Ann Rinkus please come to the front and face the assembly 